make everybody aware of a pre-tribulation rapture teaching that you may not have ever heard of because I almost never hear pastors talk about this, but it's an, a foundational belief to the pre-tribulational system. I'm going to tell you that I actually think it's extremely dangerous because I believe it affects the gospel. So to me, it's a very important matter to figure out. So within pre-tribulational teaching, it's believed that, you know, the rapture happens in Revelation chapter four, and that is the actual church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, they get raptured. Now it's believed that anybody that gets saved during the tribulation period is actually not truly a Christian. That's where it gets kind of complicated. They're not the bride of Christ. They're not the body of Christ. They have, according to this teaching, their own salvation category. They believe that people that get saved in the tribulation are actually saved by works. Now, for somebody that hasn't heard that, you're telling me right now, no way that that's true, but I promise it's true. It really is. That's what they teach. And again, this comes back to dispensational teaching with Darby and Schofield and later works like Dispensational Truths, a different book that breaks down all of these dispensations and all of these different ways to be saved. And some people will go as far as to say that there's four different gospels, not as in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but literally four different salvation plans in the New Testament. And their reason for saying this basically is the idea that because people in the tribulation can't take the mark of the beast without not being saved, essentially, that that means that they're saved by their works. It's kind of difficult for me to even put it into words, but that's basically the teaching. But I would argue that it's not a brand new teaching. Let's look at a few verses and you guys tell me what you think. So Matthew 10 33 says, but whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. And that's Jesus talking. And that one is repeated in the other gospels. So I won't say the same one over and over, but it's in the gospels. And then in 2 Timothy 2 12, we hear, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So I don't think it's a new teaching in the Bible suddenly just for tribulation saints, so-called tribulation saints, because I see no evidence in any part of the New Testament that there's suddenly a new group of quasi-Christians that are these tribulation saints. I think that they are just flat out the Christians that are still alive during the time of the tribulation, which will include all of us if we make it that long. Now, I will say Revelations, uh, Revelation 13, 8 is interesting. It says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So I think that there is biblical evidence to show that people that are truly saved will not end up taking the mark of the beast. It also reminds me of Matthew 24 that talks about how in the end times, the deception will be so strong that the elect would be deceived if it were possible. So that leads me to believe that the Holy Spirit inside of true believers is going to preserve them and help them not to be deceived. But that's kind of another topic altogether. So I just wanted to get the conversation started. Anybody's free to jump in. It should be interesting. God bless.